We begin in the name of the triune God. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Wicker Park Lutheran Church. It is so good to be worshiping with you this day. Whether you're joining us on our worship live stream or here in person, we just want to extend a warm welcome on this Sunday. For those of you worshiping by worship live stream, I want to direct your attention to the link in the QR code on the screen. If you follow those, it's going to take you over to our electronic bulletin, as well as other resources that you might need during today's service. For those of you joining us here in person today, I want to make sure um, that you um, notice our, our kind of new revised and updated uh, uh, protocols in light of the advisory that indoors we are to wear masks at this time. We would ask that you keep masks on uh, during the service today, even if you're seated, but especially when you're moving about. Um, at the end of service, um, that we will also have a time where we can sing together um, the music um, of the final hymn. Um, the hymn is going to be after the service is over, so you're welcome to stick around. There's going to be an extended introduction, um, and Vicar and I will head outside so we can get a chance to chat, um, and you're welcome to stay here and sing that final hymn. With all of that said, I invite you to remain seated as uh, Dr. Jordan centers us in song. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with all the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day your people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So in the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew that was around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there, on the surface of the wilderness, was a fine, flaky substance. As a fine frost, as fine as frost on the ground. So when the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given for you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Please stand as you are able for the Holy Gospel. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What well, sign? Yes, Jesus, what signs are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? I mean, our ancestors, well, they ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So I'm wondering, did anyone else join in the bread baking craze this year? <laughs> yeah, a couple of us. So I imagine that the crowd at Galilee in this text that we read about today were like those of us who wanted to bake bread in those early days of the pandemic. But in my case, when I had this urge, you know, and I, and I went about to try to gather all that I would need to do that, I couldn't find one main ingredient, flour. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I imagine the crowd in this passage, like many of us, or at least me, uh, going from store to store looking for that prized ingredient, desperate to find that thing that would solve their problems and that would satisfy the hunger that they were feeling. You see, the crowds had just been fed by Jesus in a miraculous feeding of a crowd of 5,000 people. And they were so impressed by that meal. Just a few verses before this, it tells us that they wanted to force Jesus to be their king so that Jesus could provide for them every day. And so when Jesus left, they ran after him. You see, the folks in that Galilean countryside were known for being a group of outcasts and bandits, and sometimes they just lived from day to day, and they had no leader, and they probably didn't always have enough to eat all the time. And so they wanted not only uh, full bellies, but they wanted that continual assurance that they were going to be okay, and that the uncertainty of everyday life wasn't going to overwhelm them or defeat them. In the uncertainty of daily life, they went to Jesus to conform to their demands and their expectations. They wanted to force him to be their king. And if well, he, they couldn't get him to be their king, they wanted to know, well, what can we do to perform these works of God? What can we do to make this, this miraculous feeding happen every day for ourselves? I know I can definitely relate to that feeling of uncertainty. Uh, today is my final day, unfortunately, as vicar and pastoral intern here at Wicker Park Lutheran Church. And I have to admit that from the moment I started this internship, I had my own ideas and plans. I dreamed that we would go back to in-person worship way sooner than we actually did. <laughs> That was the flour, the main ingredient I was looking for and that I thought I needed for an internship experience and to make and to become bread. And not having that element brought waves of uncertainty. I thought, would I be ready for future ministry without that in-person experience? Would I have all that I needed in the future? And would the church that I knew, would it ever be the same? If you're like me, you've lived with a lot of uncertainty this past year, your own uh, situations and struggles. Perhaps you find that baking bread isn't the only thing that uncertainty has driven you to. Maybe you've tried to force order and control in your homes or workplaces like that Galilean crowd tried to force Jesus to be their king. Or maybe you've tried to compensate for that uncertainty uh, with your own plans and ideas about how this year is going to go and when you're going to get back to your activities that you want. Like the Galilean crowd wanting to learn how to perform Jesus's miracles for themselves. Well, when it comes to baking bread, or anything for that matter, it's easy to force our ideas and our expectations of what goes into that process. But I love a reflection um, that I read by Gunilla Norris in her book on becoming bread. And she reminds us that 
there are a lot of things that go into bread. It's not just water and yeast and flour, all the things that you would expect, but a lot more. She says that willingness is an important and essential ingredient. And when we don't have it, it often comes out as willfulness. And when this happens, she says, we act out of fear and we often uh, try to compensate for that uncertainty and we demand, you know, feed me like how I want to be fed, what I want to be fed and when I want to be fed. In our text today, the people are demanding food on their terms. And Jesus sees right through that. Jesus sees through that surface level hunger. And he sees the telltale signs of a hunger beneath that hunger. The uncertainty, the fear, and all the ways that they try to make him conform to their expectations. And Jesus speaks to that deeper hunger when he says, I am the bread of life. I am your main ingredient. I am your basic provision for that basic primal fear and uncertainty. Jesus points them to a willingness rather than willfulness. And he points them to an openness to recognize that hunger beneath their hunger and to be open to the possibility of sustenance for that hunger and to be open to all the teachings of Jesus and to be open uh, to that deep and abundant life that he gives rather than demanding what they think is best. So too, Jesus today invites us to recognize that hunger beneath the hunger, beneath that frantic flower searching and the other things we might try to do when we face uncertainty. We too are invited to willingness, to openness, to see and recognize that uncertainty in our hunger for stability born out of fear and vulnerability. And we're invited to recognize that hunger so that we may be open to seeing how God is feeding that hunger. And Jesus invites us to see our own uncertainty, to not impose our own solutions, but rather take a moment to see what's already around us, to see what God has already given us, and the sustenance already present in our lives. But what, you may ask, what does that even feel or look like? Going back to Ganilla Norris, while she says, when we can open the cupboard door of the heart's kitchen, we are expressing this acceptance of our creatureliness. And as we look at the ingredients inside, the ones that we like and the ones that we prefer to deny, we're beginning to trust God to make bread out of all of it. Like I said earlier, throughout this past year, I've held onto my vision of what church should look like, which is pretty much what it looked like before the pandemic. But I've also seen how, even though the cupboard didn't look like I thought it would, and I, I didn't have all the ingredients that I thought I would, like in-person worship for the majority of my internship, I have still been able to learn and grow in ways that I never thought possible in the majority online church experience. And I've seen God make bread out of what we do have. For example, I've been truly amazed how even in the midst of a pandemic, God has breathed life into this community and in turn this faith community has breathed life into its surrounding community. I've seen how uh, we wrote 85 letters to immigrants in detention during Advent, made 45 bags of Christmas cookies for homebound neighbors. We surpassed our Lenten uh, service goal for uh, raising funds. We continued monthly feedings with the uh, night ministry and we started the little, um, the little free pantry outside. 
And not to mention, we expanded our digital church ministries through worship live stream and digital fellowship and Sunday school throughout the whole year. So friends, as we come to understand Jesus as the bread of life, and as we become marked by willingness rather than willfulness, and we open ourselves to God's ingredients and not our own, we see that sustenance and nourishment can come from where we least expect it. As I'm ending my time here at WPLC, um, that began in uncertainty a year ago and now is kind of ending in another round of uncertainty with the Delta variant on the rise and as I um, head off into kind of an unknown future in my own personal professional life, I realize that life is just one wave of uncertainty after the next. But I also know that God has fed us abundantly this past year and will continue to sustain us in whatever comes next. So as we come to God's communion table today, as we're nourished by that bread of life, may we indeed be empowered and um, enabled to not act and live out of that uncertainty and that fear, but rather out of that abundant life that comes with joining God's mission and participating in God's vision and making God's delicious bread with or without flower. Amen. Forever. 
please stand as you are able. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry, especially in the Republic of Congo, Gabon, and Sao Tome and Principe. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and the wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests, defend species at risk of extinction, and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing and accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these things and all of our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. If you're joining us by worship live stream, that might be putting something in the chat or texting someone. If you're here in person, um, we invite you to share uh, the peace with those around you. If you do decide to leave where you're seating, just be mindful of uh, the social stickers that the other is wearing. Let us now pass the peace. Well, again, it is good to be worshiping with you all today. And on this day, um, we uh, give thanks for, for Vicar Bethany and her ministry among us. And so um, a little bit later in today's service, we will have the opportunity um, to formally give thanks for her. And then uh, we invite you to join us outside um, to, to send her off with good wishes 
and kind words as she goes forth. And so, as I've uh, announced before, but in case um, you haven't heard, uh, Vicar Bethany has been assigned to the Metropolitan Chicago Synod. So that's kind of in this area around here. Um, and so she will be, as she leaves here, will be preparing for her first call um, to soon be um, Pastor Bethany um, in uh, the church. So um, yeah, let's give a, a round of applause. Huge effort. And there are uh, great opportunities that you all can get engaged with us as well. And so if you have um, uh, your bulletin and you're in person, on page 7, you'll see a QR code and a link there. And if you're joining us via worship live stream, that link and QR code is on the screen. If you were to head over to that site, it you would eventually find our digital connect card. And this is a great way where you can get involved with our ministries. You can sign up for our e-newsletter to keep updated on kind of what's going on around here. You can let us know that you are a visitor or guest and you want to get together, grab a cup of coffee, grab a drink, um, or um, uh, do so a meeting over Zoom. Whatever feels comfortable for you, I'd love to get a chance to get to know you a bit more and share a bit more about Wicker Park Lutheran Church. You will also see in your bulletin and in the electronic announcements that um, back this year, by popular demand, we are going to be putting together bags of love for God's work, Our Hands Sunday, which is the second Sunday in September. And so if you're not sure what bags of love are, it's basically we take big Ziploc bags and we put in there a whole bunch of things, some, some raisins and some uh, toothbrush and toothpaste and um, uh, an emergency blanket and a poncho and all sorts of supplies. And then what we do is after we make that, we're going to add some cards in there that you all will have a chance um, to write. Um, and then we hand them out to people um, that we see who might be in need. So instead of turning away from that person that you um, often see at the exit ramp or somebody who you often see as you're walking down the street uh, asking for money, you can have an opportunity to step towards them and encounter Christ in those people. So what we need at this point is donations so that we can buy those items. Um, you can either donate financially or you can also purchase those items and bring those with you here to church. You, there's more information in the bullets and I believe it's on page 11 if I remember correctly. Yep, so the inside um, cover there that lists all of that out. Also, you'll find that in the e-news um, and on our announcements page. Um, so get a chance to think about that, and maybe next time you're at the store, grab a little something to put in the cart um, so that we can uh, put those bags of love together. After service today, um, we will continue to have the opportunity to stick around and sing um, a hymn together. So the service will officially end with the blessing and dismissal. If you'd like to stay for the singing, um, then you can uh, stay right where you are. Um, and after Vicar and I have left and head outside, then um, Dr. Jordan will lead us in song. Um, if you um, uh, don't feel comfortable staying for that him, please join us outside. Um, and uh, on your way out, there's going to be a little treat that you can grab um, from Stan's Donuts um, as we celebrate and send off a uh, vicar. Um, and so there um, is an opportunity um, to do so um, kind of as you're, you're headed out of the uh, sanctuary space. In just a few moments, we will gather together for Holy Communion. For those of you who are here in person, hopefully you got a communion kit. Um, if you did not get one, our ushers can help um, get you one. Uh, for those of you who are joining us on Worship Livestream, you can get something to eat, something to drink, ideally a staple grain and a festive beverage. Um, and as we gather together, we know that communion has always been this kind of hybrid experience. It's always been virtual and in person. It has always been this time where we gather together around this table in person, but we also gather with all of God's saints of all times and of all places. And so as we gather today, the important thing to know is that you are welcome at this table without any exception. So please, please feel free to join us um, today in celebrating Holy Communion. And now we take this opportunity before we gather around the table to give of our offerings. And so many of you give electronically through your recurring donations, and we give thanks for that. For those of you who also choose to give either um, in person and with our offering plates or electronically using the link in the QR code on the screen or in your bulletin, um, know that we give about 10% of all that we receive to our ministry partners across the city and across the globe. To partners like the Night Ministry and ELCA World Hunger, who 
who help to bring the bread of God's abundant life to people of all, um, in all different places around the globe. So I invite you to get a chance to reflect on these gifts that you've given and the ways that we get to partner with God so that we can be and become the bread of life as we are sustained here, but also as we are sent into the world to do that great work. So please reflect on those gifts today or give using the link, the QR code, or the offering. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. And so, with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. It is you we praise and glorify. It is you that we worship and adore. For you formed the earth from chaos. You molded us in your image. You blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your people. And you adopted us as your own through the life and death of Jesus. Then in the night in which Jesus Christ was betrayed, our Lord took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He blessed it, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this cup often in remembrance of me. Holy God, send upon this meal your mother spirit whose breath revives us for life and whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold all who share this holy food in your holy church throughout the world, now and forever. Amen. And now gathered together by the Spirit's motherly care, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, I now invite you to take the communion kit that you might have here in person or the bread that you have at home. And here in person, you're just going to peel that off on the bottom to take out the bread. And know that as we eat this together, this is the body of Christ given for you. Then I invite you to take the wine or that which you have to drink before you, knowing that as we drink this together, this is indeed the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And I invite you to be seated. And Vicar, I invite you to come on down. Well, Vicar Bethany, we of Wicker Park Lutheran Church have been honored to have you here for the last year, to have you serving among us as a pastoral intern. Now, over the past year, you have done amazing work. You have deepened our experience of what it means to live out our faith to support immigrants and, and those who are coming to this country seeking a better life, what it means for us to be a part of this global family of all of God's children. You have helped lead us through an Advent season where we, as you mentioned, wrote letters to those who are in um, detention centers, where we connected with those in the nursing home, where we got a chance to see that God is present in all the places that we travel, our homes, nursing homes, even places that feel distant and separated from one another. On top of that, we've walked through a really unique Holy Week, uh, live streaming all of that from here. You also helped us lead Sunday school to preach, to teach, to repair the basement ceiling. Uh, you called God's people in this place to care for one another. You turned your hair pink. You had your car stuck in the snow outside. You had been growing a child within you during this internship year. Bethany, you are a gift to this church. You have been a gift to us. And we are so excited to see the ways that God continues to work through you and through your ministry. And so as you depart today, just as a see you later, not as a goodbye, um, receive um, this prayer and this blessing from our God. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. You equip your people with abilities that differ according to the grace given to them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give you thanks for the ministry of Vicar Bethany among the people of God in this congregation. Bless now this time of ending and beginning. Prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive all that has fallen short of your will for us. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And as a time of celebration, um, not only do we have the Stan's Donuts, which I talked about here. Sorry for those of you who are joining us on Worship Livestream. You should go get something festive out of your cabinets. Um, we also have um, some uh, great gifts um, uh, to give you as well. Um, and before we give the gifts and give a round of applause, I want to see if there's anything that you want to um, say to the congregation today. Thank you, Pastor Jason, so much for those words. They mean so much to me. Um, yeah, this year has been incredible. It's been in the middle of a pandemic. It's been very unique, but I am leaving with 
uh, so many rich uh, learning experiences that I am so grateful for. Uh, thank you for welcoming me into your community a year ago, and thank you for walking alongside of me throughout this whole year. And as a parting gift, I am leaving this uh, signed copy of this book to the WPLC Library. It's the second edition of They Are Us, Lutherans and Immigration. And I hope it's a valuable resource to um, all in the, the in WPLC who are um, committed to the w, to the immigrant ministry here, and um, I hope it'll um, serve to to further that. And um, yeah, I hope to see everyone uh, out for the donuts, and I hope you'll stop by and chat. And I just hope and pray that WPLC continues to be the beacon of of welcome and love and um, light that I experienced it to be this year in my internship. Thank you. Well, and I also got a chance to check out the book before, and it's a, a, it's a signed copy by the bishop who wrote it, um, and so very, very special. So thank you so much for giving us that gift um, and for the ways that you've nurtured that here in this place as we uh, declared ourselves an Amparo welcoming congregation, um, and that's something you guided us through, so thank you. Um, and let's give uh, Vicar a round of applause as we thank her for her time. And Vicar, if you would do the honors of sending us with um, God's blessing um, this day. And the blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us, and who journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh.
Oh, grandpa. Huh?